rabbits, camels, and donkeys. Sam and Wallace. Hey there, bring a Fanta for my young friend and a Sprite for me. Thank you. You are simply the best, Mr. Wallace. Very well. Now, I do have your full attention. Please tell me what we have discussed so far today, Sam. Oh no, that's a lot to ask for a soda. All right, all right, let me see. We talked about sheep breeds kept for wool, meat, or both. You did mention that there are goats kept for their mohair, but mostly others for their milk and meat. Am I correct? Of course, you have good memory. And don't forget, Merida is the only sheep that produces high quality wool, while the Angora is the only known goat that gives us the mohair you talked about. Here is another question to jog your memory. Which livestock types haven't we discussed yet? Several. Rabbits, camels, and donkeys. Right? Good. Now I can briefly go over them before we call it a day. Where do you want to start? Anywhere. Rabbits then. Now, in Kenya, rabbit keeping is gaining popularity because they can thrive in nearly any environmental condition. Also, they require little food and space, and it's a good source of meat. I have never tasted rabbit meat my entire life. Don't worry, Sam. There is always a fast time. In a matter of time, you will know the parts to eat. Here, take a look at the different parts of a rabbit. Are there different types of breeds too? You bet. The various breeds are New Zealand White, California White, Flemish Giant, Chinchilla, and Eops. And New Zealand White and California White are both white in color, I guess. Good guess. But California White has some parts being black, like the ears, nose, paws, and the tail. Earlobe is white as well, but identified by its looping ears. And the others? Flemish Giant. It is gray or blue-black in color. Then the Chinchilla is the one that produces high-quality fur. Quickly run through camels and donkeys. My bottle is almost empty. Patience, boy. I can afford a second one. All right. Camels are not common around here, but you will find them in plenty in arid and semi-arid areas of the world. They do well in such areas because they are highly tolerant to high temperatures and can survive without water for long periods due to its body parts. So how else are they important other than providing animal power in the farm? Yeah, camels provide milk, meat, and even hide. Milk? Yeah, and they can produce about 9 liters of milk a day, and their milk never cuddles. Jeez, are there different kinds of camels? Just two. First is the dromedary type, which is single humped. Came from Arabia and Syria, and is the only kind kept in Kenya. Bacterian camel has two humps. Yes, you are smart. And it is much smaller than the dromedary camel. It originated from Central America and has more fur covering the body. And finally, you want to talk about the ass. Yeah, the donkey is kept for the provision of animal power needed in plowing and pulling carts. You can call them the beast of burden due to the nature of work they do. I want you to study this chart to see the different parts of a donkey. Can I take these charts with me from my library at home? Well, you can't take my copies, but I can produce some copies for you. Uh, that is after we try some rabbit stew. Ah, that's perfect. Give me some needed nutrition. Nutrition, yes. Animals need nutrition. If you come back tomorrow, I will tell you all about it. And? And a Fanta, you greedy boy. <laughs>